Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're talking about bus compression, but really kind of a different angle on it. I wanna focus on kick drum, maybe a little on snare, but I wanna really focus on the effect of layered compression. We have compression on the individual track level. We have compression on like a, a subgroup level, right? Like kick and sub kick, you know, bus together. We have drum bus compression, and then we have stereo bus compression. So I wanna talk and kind of experiment for you about the different layers of compression, maybe some different settings on these compressors and how kind of sharing the load of low end can affect the sound. So this is gonna be a fun one, check it out. Okay, so my inspiration for this was actually in the overheads. I was thinking, man, those overheads are kind of getting slammed with compression. But I didn't think that I had much going on with compression. You know, I actually, uh, on the way going in, I had used the Tigler Audio Crim compressor, the blue one there on the screen. And, you know, I might have overdone it a little bit more for the recording stage than I might have preferred. And it's probably kind of maxed out as is. Um, which is good, right? You hope that you don't go over. Uh, you can never get that back. But I was able to compress it on the way in, maybe a little bit of low end boost, a little bit of top end boost. I mean, I love this crim com compressor for overheads. You know, if I'm doing small diaphragms, I can give it a low end boost. And that low end boost is kind of wooly, kind of very broad, especially at like 140. And it gives me like that big thick low end out of small diaphragms that I miss if I'm used to like ribbon mics, right? But if I'm using ribbon mics, well, then I can boost the top end. The top end boost is actually incredible on this Tegler Audio. Uh, I mean, it's just really, really nice. And then, you know, the compressor I think is a little too, f a little too flavored for stereo bus, but it's about right for you know drum bus or overheads is really my favorite application for it it's very smooth sounding so this is what the overheads had on the way in and you know i was thinking man like it just seems like there's a lot of compression going on what are the layers of compression really doing so i figured well let's make a video about kick drum because that's very easy to hear that's you know something that we can use like high pass uh, sidechain stuff with. And then we can kind of experiment and see, you know, I wonder what happens if I sidechain, uh, you know, high pass the drum bus compressor and then let it go through and hit the stereo bus. Or what happens if I do the opposite? I control it with the drum bus. And then the stereo bus is a little bit more open and it's not getting, you know, slammed by that low end. So that was really the inspirations, uh, inspiration for today's video, is just kind of experiment with the different layers. Now, I do have a free download for you today. I'm still offering my PDF guide, which is my free plugins toolbox. This is actually a no-cost plugin uh, guide, my favorites, right? I mean, there's all sorts of lists out there of free plugins, but I've done the digging for you. I've gone through and really hand-picked out some that I think are worth actually picking up. There's some really good emulations like 1073. There's um, actually a really good bus compressor in there as well. Um, so that's available. Um, you can get that in the upper right of your screen or in, this, in the description below. It's a free download. If you're already on my email list, check your email. Uh, it's probably already in your inbox. So, uh, today's song is by Tongues of Fire called Lethargy. Really cool track, local band uh, here in Asheville, North Carolina. Let's check it out.
on my hands It's alright I lay here Just stay here and wait for my chance Looks bright Okay, so really cool track. It breaks has kind of this really cool breakdown there at the end. Um, so yeah, a few different things going on here. I mean, we have um, individual kick uh, compression compression going on here. Uh, we have uh, the drum bus compression, and that is done through the Tigler audio. So, and then we have the stereo bus compression that's going through the Heritage Audio successor. So let me see if I can get a good comparison here of what everything is doing. Let's just solo that, uh, that drum bus here. So you hear that? So in Studio One, this Pipeline XT, I just, I love this thing, man. Like, you just kind of hit that button, hit auto, we're back to normal. So now I could get back to my settings if I have to check them to make sure they're correct. But now it's compensated and it, it'll mix perfectly now. Yeah, it's uh, really subtle for some reason. Man, that's that's really crazy how smooth that is. I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm like cranking it. Um, but yeah, so I have a little bit of top boost. I have uh, quite a bit going on. Gosh, why does it not sound so much more obvious? That's crazy. Here and wait for my 
Yeah, you know, that is a classic example of, you know, compression is easier to hear when it's buried in something, right? And maybe my monitors are too loud. I mean, this is like, this is pretty early in the morning here. So I don't know, maybe I'm not quite calibrated here. Uh, but, you know, I got my monitors cranked. I got the drum bus soloed and it's like, I can't hear it as good. And then I do it in the mix and all of a sudden it's just like, wow, that's actually doing a lot, you know, like kick drums almost gone, you know, when I crank it and it's just, you know, the needles bumping. So, uh, let's have a listen in the context now. And, uh, you can really hear it a lot better. I think. I can't stand. It's all right. Yeah, so you can really hear how the mix almost falls apart without the compression, you know? Um, it's kind of subtle, right? Like, I, I guess I'm in kind of an aggressive mood right now, and I'm just wanting to crank something. But it's a delicate task, and so, I mean, I'm, like, cranking the threshold. And, but it takes a more delicate touch than that. And when you really take it off and you listen in context, you can really hear what it's doing. So, you know, the kick drum obviously is under more control. Uh, the stereo bus compression, you know, like the kick drum just gets way loud without it, right? And I've heard that like, uh, you know, depending on the style of music and stuff, you know, the vocal level can change. I mean, there's tons of things that can change. And so, you know, these bus compressors really become a lens that we mix through. And so, you know, a lot of times I will go to the track level and, you know, do all my work there and just do as much mixing as possible. And this is for probably the first two to three hours of mixing. You know, I just, I just mix, okay? Uh, nothing on the stereo bus, just, you know, just basically straight out. And in fact, for years, uh, that's how I mixed. I mean, I just, I figured, well, you know, stereo bus compression is for the mastering guy. I'm just going to mix the song. Uh, but then, you know, talking with Eric Serafin and, uh, you know, just really talking philosophy behind stereo bus compression, I came to realize that it's really a lens that we hear through and that hopefully mastering is more of a tone thing with EQ and a limiting thing uh, to kind of limit the peaks, but the compression part, like the colorful part, the lower ratio part, that's more of a mixing thing. 
what's interesting is like these uh, 1176 plugins or or even, you know, the, the hardware that, that I have over here, right? Like, you'll notice that it's more flavorful at the 4 and 8 ratio. And the 20 to 1, you would think that's more flavorful, right? Like a higher ratio, you're going to get more flavor. Well, I mean, I guess. Like, you're going to hear it clamp down on the low end, for example. But I would argue that it's only treating the loud stuff. And so the real quiet stuff, it doesn't really get affected. And so you don't really hear the grab of the compressor on the details of somebody's voice or the source, whether it's an instrument or voice, whatever. So I would argue that it's counterintuitive. The higher the ratio, the more transparent it is. The lower the ratio, the more audible it is. And I've talked about this before in my video on the Audioscape 76A. I kind of broke it down. It was kind of a big series of videos, right? And, uh, you know, the lower ratios have this soft knee that kicks in. And then the higher ratios have a hard knee that kicks in. That's why you have to kind of give a little boost on the input. So the soft knee, it, it kind of compresses technically before the threshold. And it doesn't really do 4 to 1 right away. It might do like a 1.5 to 1, then a 2 to 1, then a 4 to 1, okay, as it gets closer to that threshold. So there's a lot more kind of massaging of all the different dynamics of something. So going back to bus compression, you know, we have ratios of 1.5 to 1 at the Heritage Audio. We have 2 to 1, 3 to 1. I'm at 3 to 1 right now. And so, yeah, like, yeah, compression could be for the mastering guy. That's one way to put it. But I would say it's more about the limiting, uh, the formatting, making sure it's ready to be published, the tone, uh, stereo, you know, stereo wideness. Um, so as I've kind of progressed through my skills, and, and maybe maybe you think the same, maybe you disagree with me, but I I tend to think of it as a mixing thing, you know, and to use low ratios, right? Because then you get the flavor, you get the interaction of things in the mix and kind of that glue, okay, like a glue style compression. And I, I mix like full on, right? I don't do like a wet dry thing. I just I just go for it, you know, uh, because I'm trying to allow it to shape the mix. Okay, I'm I'm going for it. Um, so yeah, we could experiment a little bit with that, um, but that's kind of the philosophy. That's what I have set up now. Okay, is full wet. You know, we could do uh, we could do a wet dry with the drums. What's great about this Pipeline XT is that. Everything has a wet dry. Everything. In fact, this is, you almost could say off topic here, but put in the mix tool. You can MS transform. You put this before the Pipeline XT. You send it out. I'll just take this off because I don't need it, but you, you put it before the Pipeline XT you send it out to two different pieces of gear, and it sends it out as mid on one piece of gear, side on another piece of gear. Then it comes back in, and you put another mix tool on it that has the MS transform, and it converts it back to left-right stereo. And what that allows you to do is, even if something isn't matched, even if a compressor isn't matched, let's take these Pultec style EQs, right? Like, how could I ever expect if I bought two of the same for them to be matched? I mean, that would take a lot of going through parts and actually matching every single part, every single resistor and things like that. You know, that would actually take more money to get a matched left-right than just to make one mono uh, piece of outboard. But in this technique, I could send mid to one EQ, side to another EQ, 
and the stereo imaging would be identical, right? Because both sides are literally getting the same piece of equipment. I'm getting mono down the middle, and I'm getting the sides, you know, out to the side here with that one piece. So mid side, and it is literally, it's like cloning a piece of gear, right? That's crazy. It is matched, it's perfectly matched because it's like you're cloning that piece of gear and your stereo image is perfect between the sides. So I've done this before on the channel where I send um, the mid to like my uh, WT comp at the bottom of the screen. And then I send the sides to the 1176, right? And we're talking like stereo bus. It kind of works. Like it's a little different, but it's not terrible. It's totally mismatched, but it works because we're sending the sides to the same piece of gear. Okay, we don't have to like mess with the outputs and send a test tone to try to get the levels matched. None of that. All I have to worry about is, you know, returning it back and making sure that it's not like crazy wide or crazy narrow. Because if say the volume of the side is too loud, yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be really wide because it's the sides are too loud. That's the only thing you have to worry about, but the left to right image is perfect. So, um, gosh, I don't even know how I got on this, but, you know, outboard can be a lot of fun and really capable. I mean, you know, wet, dry mix for every single piece of gear. Even though this creme compressor doesn't have a dry wet. Okay. So let's have some fun here. Let's do, let's play with the dry wet. I wanna do that and then let's do the side chain high pass, okay? So, just to clarify, this is the wet dry mix, okay? I've pinged it using the Pipeline XT in Studio One. It matches it up perfectly. And then I can do a wet dry, okay? I took a picture here for my settings. I can load it in. So I got the wet dry. Pretty freaking cool. So I have it slammed right now in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, and then I have also uh, in the background my mouse moving the wet dry. And of course this piece of gear doesn't have a wet dry. So really, really cool era for recording, you know? I mean, we couldn't do this uh, a while ago, but now we can. So that's basically in a more extreme setting, mixed in at about, you know, 30% or so. Um, and that's one approach to do it. Uh, now, I've talked about this whole lens idea where you're mixing through this lens, and I think that approach really is like 100% wet. And so that's why I've kind of done it more subtle before, which is like, you know, 4 dB or less. But, um, but for this, yeah, it's a kind of extreme setting. It's pumping pretty good. And then I just kind of mix it in to taste. Um, you know, so yeah, pretty cool. Let me take this back down to kind of where I had it. My hands, it's alright. I lay here, 
Yeah, you can hear how nice that top end boost is. Uh, so yeah, this is about about right. So now let's go on to the stereo bus and let's experiment with that a little bit. Um, I have that over here. I have uh, a couple of limiters um, on the uh, basically a pre-master out. And I have this set up so that if I have a reference mix, that can go to the main stereo out. And it doesn't go through a second time the stereo bus compression. So that's the only reason why I have this, really. Just so the reference mixes don't get compressed twice. So this is the uh, same picture, but it covers also uh, what these settings are. This is the stereo bus settings uh, right here. So this compressor has a dry wet. Uh, we could use that. Right now, the knob is actually taken out of the circuit. So it has a blend knob on the far right, and I just kind of keep it off, uh, which is kind of handy. But yeah, you could go from full wet, and then you can kick it on, and you can hear, like, compare and contrast, like a 50-50 mix, you know? Or you could have it all the way to zero, and it's almost like a bypass, right? So it's kind of cool. So let's hear it. adjust my levels make sure I'm not getting too loud here So, you know, flipping that on is going from fully wet, 100%, to 50-50 mix. Right. Those are the right settings uh, right there, but that is kind of like a, almost like a, a loudness, uh, kind of fatness boost.
might be hard to know what I'm doing here, but uh, so the dynamic button next to the meter, when the meter goes off, it's basically nothing. Uh, the button next to the dry wet knob, that's allowing me to do 50-50 mix. And if it's off, then it's 100% mix. So maybe I just not use that button and just use the, the dry wet knob so it's clear what's going on. And then I'll use the dynamics in and out because uh, the light will switch off and it's, I, I think, more clear when the whole thing is bypassed. cool about this is uh, you can really hear how the compressor is super adaptable. I mean, um, at the 1.5 ratio, uh, you can really speed up the uh, attack and release, but it gets very, very aggressive in kind of an unpleasing way at higher ratios, so you have to slow down the attack and the release. So it's, it's kind of interesting because you can... You can really see the range of the compressor as you move the ratio. So, you know, if it weren't for those fast of speeds, the low ratios just wouldn't do a whole lot. And it allows you to really dig in on those low ratios. At the higher ratios, the speeds are just way too fast. You got to slow them down. So, yeah, you can get a lot of flavor with this thing is kind of my point. Uh, you can go real, real low with the ratio. You can get a lot of flavor. Then you can mix it in 50-50 uh, to kind of bring up the... Uh, kind of the average volume.
Yeah, so even that is probably an extreme setting. I mean, it's very aggressive, and it's like, what, 30% maybe on the wet-dry? So, yeah, I mean, but it has the range, which is pretty cool, uh, you know. So that's a little bit on wet and dry. Um, now let's see uh, kind of the, the high passing, you know, with the side chain, because that's where kind of the kick either weighs down uh, the bus compression or not. So there, you know, we have a high pass of 160 on the successor, and I'm kind of letting the kick through, and it's going to be hitting my limiters a bit harder, right? I actually have two in series. Um, I kind of put these on just so I don't clip the video, but I kind of don't mind it either. I mean, these things sound great. They're basically just here just to get the peaks. So letting the kick through on a high pass like that um well of course it's being treated by the bus compressor uh actually so let's see what happens if i high pass both compression uh compressors Yeah, the kick is really loud, right? Because drum bus compression isn't hitting the kick at all. It's not controlling it. Stereo bus compression, it's not controlling it either. So it's running wild, you know? So let's see what happens if we let it go through the drum bus and hit the stereo bus. Okay, now I'll control it. Um, I was kind of getting ahead of myself there. Now let's control it with the drum bus, but high pass with the stereo bus. Yeah, I like that a lot better, actually. Um, you know, it gets the stuff under control, but it doesn't feel heavy, right? When the successor on the stereo bus 
is controlling that low end, and it's the only thing doing it, then it kind of pulls everything, the guitars, everything down when it has to control that kick. And here we have it already controlled by the drum bus compression. So we're kind of easing the load. Okay, so, you know, there I was actually having to compensate with the threshold. If I high pass the detector, it's not going to be weighed down by that low end, so I have to dig down further with the threshold to get the same amount of action on the needle. So I'm aiming for like 4 dB uh, for this mix. I don't mind the pumping, you know, I don't mind kind of the, the sound of the compressor. So that's what I was doing there. It's just kind of showing you the difference of full range versus high pass. Now let me see if I can do this, but let me see if I can uh, kind of switch back and forth between the drum bus being full range and, you know, the stereo bus being full range. So only one being full range at a time. So I'm not sure which one you like more, but I think I like actually the full range on drum bus and then actually high passing the stereo bus. So and the configuration now is my least favorite. I would I would do the other. Yeah, that sounds really nice. I mean, I don't know. I just kind of like how it shapes the low end. It doesn't sound um, kind of overdone. Like, I think if it goes through and hits the stereo bus, it's just a little over compressed, I think. But at the drum bus level, it I don't know. It's like I can get away with it more. It's a higher ratio, even four to one. Um, it's definitely more aggressive compression. I mean, it's like one millisecond attack, uh, really fast release where the stereo bus is what, auto? Yeah, auto one and what, three millisecond attack? I can't really read it, but... Uh, 
Okay, two millisecond attack. So, yeah, Drum Bus is definitely more aggressive, but I can get away with it because we're, we're going basically upstream, right? We're going closer to the source level so we can get away with more aggressive sounds. If you're with me at the beginning of the video, I talked about the, uh, you know, how, how effects can get more and more refined as we get further down the production process. So at the instrument level, we have uh, very aggressive effects, right? Like we have compressors that are very grippy. We have distortion that is very distorted, but then we go to like stereo bus and we have like the black box and it's very refined distortion, right? So things get more refined as we go down the production process. And we can hear that here, you know? We can compress harder at the drum bus, but then we go to stereo bus, it just doesn't take it as much. We, we like to, you know, do a little bit like lower moves, more refined moves at the stereo bus. So yeah, we, it's kind of cool to, to hear that difference. Okay, so yeah, this is me playing around with compression. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know um, if you want me to try anything. Keep talking to you in the comments below.